I don't know what it was, but I said, what the fuck is that? Like my reaction was just, I just remember being so fucking scared. Like, what the fuck was that? And like, I still think about it. And like, I don't like to go to that mall for that reason. What's good, everyone? Welcome to the Posted Podcast. We got Mo, Brose, Lo, and the Postman. So for today's first segment, we're going to get into some stories. <laughs> so scary, bro. <laughs> so dramatic, bro. I see dead people. I've got many stories. I don't even know where to begin. Have you ever seen anything? Like, like a ghost, like an actual figure? Actually, yes. I mean, multiple times. Throughout my life since I was very little. Um, but even t- today, I was at my mom's house and I was talking to her. And it, it's it's like one of those things that you see in your peripheral vision where you just kind of look and you're like, stop that. like Because people will move around and things will just kind of get your attention and then they disappear. So sometimes it's like, all right, is my mind playing tricks on me? And some people would say they beg to differ. And others would be like, yo, that, I, I saw that too. But my mom is actually very sensitive like I am. So if I see something and I'll I'll react to it, she'll be like, "Yeah, I felt that." Even though she's doing the dishes, she'll, she'll like sit up straight. She's like, "Yeah, I felt that. Where where was that?" Oh, it was That's in a Raven moment. Yeah, and so she'll she'll kind of like agree. And it's not even that she'll be like, "Oh, you know, yeah, I see it sometimes. It just, you know, I just ignore it." But for me, it's like it's in my face and I'm like, "Dude, leave me leave me alone." <laughs> and sometimes they do it. It really depends on the situation and and um, where I'm at in particular, because there's other places where, for example, like you went to New Orleans and you saw you felt a huge change and a huge shift of where you were at and in your mood. And that's kind of a reaction you would normally get when something is trying to attach itself to you. That's crazy. And so sometimes you have to like know what to do in order to ground yourself and real and like shake it off and really shake literally shaking it off and like hey this is not my energy you're not welcome in my space detach right have so. you ever have you ever spoken to them or like has they spoken to you back yeah. or like conversations is it questions is it like what is it it's almost like or, how or, or, or what's happened there? how we communicate now i don't communicate like how i'm communicating with you guys now it's very intuitive it's very telepathically um the way i describe it is like something attaching to my my lower plexus area like the gut and that's how i can hear like communicate with them so it's not more or less me talking to them like this it's me just looking it's not verbal yeah it's it's really weird like i i can explain it or i i i communicate better when i'm sleeping because they'll come to me in dream forms. But I've had people actually stop me and hold me in my place and say, hey, I need your attention. Like, please give me your attention. Okay, what do you want? And it's more or less of me having a silent conversation with them. And then I'm reiterating it. To, usually it happens with my mom there. She's been somebody I've been able to kind of like feed her all the information. Because sometimes I'm in a fucking trance. Like spaced out. <clears throat> my eyes will gloss over. And I'll look like I'm fucking stoned. And I'm not. I'm just, it'll be like an everyday thing where I'm off of work or my eyes are just like, they just gloss over. And I'm like, I'm getting a message, mom. I'll have to sit down because it's very draining. <clears throat> but they'll sit there and they'll tell me things, whether it's something super important or it's just like somebody passing. It'll be a scent that I'll smell. My senses get really heightened too. Is it sort of like in the movie Ghost with Whoopi Goldberg where she's like, like she's, She's supposedly, you know, saying that like she could hear them, but she can't see them. Yeah, yeah. So like, like and, you, and she feels them, right? Yeah. Or, it's like I mean, I remember one of one of those ghosts like went into her body, and then she started talking like that guy, can happen. Like Martha, and, like yeah. what happened to you? You let yourself go. That like, can happen, but that's only <laughs> if you're open to stuff like that. Like I am, I'm abs- I have boundaries. Yeah. Absolutely not. You don't get to tap into my energy. And take advantage of that, because then you never know what you're inviting into your spirit, into your zone. How do how do you how do you block that? Like how do you? Is it something that it takes you're just... so much practice? And honestly, I feel like that's why I was such a antsy and, and and like so much anxiety I had as a child. It makes sense now because the things that I was feeling and being like super 
fucking paranoid over. Yeah. Now I'm like, oh, I, I, I could see why that would trigger me. But it's not my energy and you balance yourself a little bit so that you don't and ground yourself so you don't feel that and you know how to block it. Yeah. But well, it sucks. <laughs> how was it like the first time something sort of like sort of like that happened? Like, I mean, we're going we're tapping way into like my childhood, like little, little, little Mo when I was maybe three, three, two or three. It happened when I was two. And how I know this is because I have flashbacks. I remember to a T certain um, points of my life that I can remember visually seeing and in being a, and being in detail as a small kid and what I was wearing and then seeing it in photos and being like, Mom, remember that party? This, this, and this. And she'd be like, girl, what the fuck? When you were two, how do you remember that? But the first time I actually had an interaction... Man, that I was aware of and I knew that's not real. You died. What are you doing sitting on my bed? Oof. I must have been eight or um, nine. That eight years old. I think old. it was nine. Cool. Yeah. Nine years old. My great grandmother, I was practicing for a competition and I would rehearse my songs. Yeah. And my door was open. I remember my bed was like at a certain angle into my hallway. My mom was in the bathroom. And I just remember going, Mom, she goes, what? She kind of peeked. I just saw grandma. She goes, what the? Like, what was she doing? I don't know. She was just sitting there on my bed like this. And she, my grandma was the tiniest thing, my great grandmother. And just her sitting there and watching me per, like practice. And she was just kind of stoic. The way she, she looked when I met her, when I was there with her, how I remembered her, that's how I saw her. And yeah, that was the first time I could say, yeah, I was at your funeral. Like, I know you passed away. There's other people that will come that I didn't know passed away. And I'm thinking of this person. Like, who's this person popping into my head, Mom? They keep asking me something. She'll be like, oh, well, what's their name? I go, their name is, you know, I'll throw out a name. My, my uncle Mauricio. Yeah. And she'll be like, what the? That is so-and-so. And he died when you were two. Yeah. And so it's kind of. So like, were you scared or were you calm or, or did you. I'm calm. I would say I would calm for the most part because it doesn't it doesn't scare me really. I feel like if they're trying to do a jump scare, you don't belong in my house anyways. So I'm very protective about my the energy and the space of where I live. And if it were something that scary looking, it's not it's not somebody I know. If they were doing a jump scare, they don't belong. What does that mean? So you have people that you identify and you recognize, right, on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's deceased family or it's energy that just doesn't make you feel like you're on edge because that's what it's supposed to do. Whatever is not welcome into your space and you feel a little anxious and you feel your heart racing or you get the chills and it's just like, I, I have a really bad feeling about this. That's when you know that that's not somebody you're you recognize or you identify with. So technically that's identified as negative energy. So that would be scary as opposed to like yeah, somebody. Your, your grandmother. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah. It's intense. It can be very, very intense. It, <laughs> if I saw. Well, you know, like in my, ha at my mom's house, um, in the, on like on the side entrance, which I coincidentally, if I end up moving back into my mom's house, that's going to be like where I come in and out of my house. Um, there's this, entity that's there all the time and it fucking growled at her one time and i was in the kitchen mind you i must have been maybe in my 20s yeah this thing whatever the hell it was and i would sense it like i don't go on that side of the house it wasn't chico it wasn't, no you know. like i didn't i don't know who it was, it was and all of a sudden i just i st stood right by the entryway and i said go away like and she was just there frozen she's like did you hear that yeah, and I told her, I not only heard that, I felt that. And to this day, like, I get the chills about it. And I, after that, I was like, fuck that. I picked, The next day, I grabbed a shit ton of salt. I'm going to go around the other and I No, I started salting my house. And I said, I'd be damned if I'm going to feel that in my house. Yeah. And so I have, like, a very protective bubble around my house where I don't allow that. And being sensitive and being able to sense and feel all of that there's a way you can protect yourself from 
having to go through something that was that drastic because that scared the shit out of me. I don't know what the hell that was. And the fact that it growled at her, that's not a good sign. <laughs> I mean, you see that in movies. You oh, don't see that. That uh, That's what, what, what you were trying to say earlier about, like, if it does a jump scare, yeah. it doesn't belong there. Yeah. And that's when that's, you were like, yeah. okay, that's scary. Where I'm like, fuck no. What are you doing here? <laughs> like, here's, no. here's some salt. Yeah. So, psst, psst, psst. I have a little day. spray bottle. <laughs> yeah. A little spray bottle. <laughs> no, I have a spray bottle and it has like um, a little bit of holy water in it and salt in it. A little bit of tequila? I don't know. <laughs> is that the scariest interaction you've had? Um, scary is in the sense of like, I, I was afraid for my mom because I don't know what the hell that was. And we're two ladies that live in a, a house and we were by ourselves. Yeah. I would say that's pretty scary, but I don't think it's necessarily the scariest. No, it's there's been there's been some situations where I can't explain exactly what I saw, what I felt, and I'm explaining what I felt, obviously, like mm-hmm. I'm going through something and later on it plays out where yeah. the details that I've given my mom about one of my like trances, I guess I call it, or if I'm having a vision of something, um it's pretty on point and it's sometimes it's not the best yeah but there's other times where i'm just like dude i called it that mom i called it she's like yeah you called it when they growled at you or whatever like you did you just feel it or did you see it like you know what it looks like could not see it it's just i just said i sensed it because it was like the minute it was like like it was fucking loud and that's why like sometimes i get scared because it could have been a raccoon but a raccoon, you'll hear, like, it has a different sound. Yeah. And when it runs off on the fence, like, I didn't hear that. I we just heard the growl. Raccoons. I fucking hate raccoons. Let's just put it. I hate raccoons for this matter because they're, they're very active in my house. Or, like, in my area, too. Page Street is just, like, the worst. Um, but, no, it was not that. And I guarantee, like, I sensed it. It wasn't even though, like, we couldn't see it. It was pitch black on the side of the house. We couldn't see anything. The fence is, like steps away from where the door stops and where it opens um so i don't know what the hell it was but she had the door the door open and the gate was closed and we heard it and the minute i i sensed it i was like it was like mid growl and i'm running to my mother because she was like what the fuck did you hear that it growled at me oh hell no and so she even started feeling like took her slipper off she got hella scared and like (laughs) i looked at her her lips were white her face was just like what the pale. fuck was that? Yeah. And so I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> oh, the rosary coming out, son. Yeah, something. Because, geez, Louise. But, no, I salted the house the next day because I said, I'll be damned. <laughs> Got the Bible right here. <laughs> Water. <laughs> Every scary movie, bro. Yeah, that growl, I just, um, I picture, in, in, again, a movie Ghost. Yeah. When, uh. The shadow creatures. Yeah, yep. those. Yep. When they start yep. growling. Mm-hmm. Never seen it. Okay. You gotta watch a good movie. You gotta watch Let it. me tell you, Sleeping the fucking it. scariest, now that I'm thinking about it. Oh, God, it still gives me chills. Okay. You guys know what skinwalkers look like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Like- so picture like a human, maybe six feet tall. Pure skin, like naked. Walking like an animal. On its four, like on its hind legs and both legs, right? We've seen enough movies to know what that looks like. Thank you. Okay. I don't know what the fuck it was, but I had like, I think I was with my mom. We were at the mall. We parked at Ceremony Mall. And we're walking towards the mall. And all of a sudden, I don't know what it was, but I turned like in between cars. I had turned and I had my, like my boyfriend at the time was with me. My mother was with me. And I think, I think it was it. It was just the three of us. Or maybe there was one more person there, Isaiah, maybe, my my nephew. And we all kind of just turned as we were walking past, like, a couple of cars. And in between the cars, you see something just, bro. <laughs> oh, they out here in the Bay, bro. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> no, like, no. I don't know what it was, but I said, what the fuck is that? Like, my reaction was just, <gasps> I just remember being so fucking scared. Like, what the fuck was that? Chills, and like, I still think about it. And like, I don't like to go to that mall for that reason because I I have that memory yeah. embedded on how disturbing it was. They, it looked like a naked, big ass dog. 
like running through the cars and and they didn't see anything no but the fact that my ex had seen it my mom had seen it and we all just stood there like what the fuck was that that scared the like to this day probably the most scariest thing i've ever like had to experience and witness but i'm glad i'm glad i wasn't by myself (laughs) i need new drugs get back in the car oh nasty yeah so when people come up with skinwalkers, they're always sending me stuff. I'm like, Ugh. let me see more. Let's see. Let's see. I want to see you know, what's going on. Like the videos I've seen of skinwalkers, it's like when they're when they're like yelling, "Help! Yeah, help! Help!" You know, and you just see their silhouette, like you know, like with the like the sun going down yeah. in the background. And yeah, stuff. like it's it's so no, creepy. that it was like, like that, huh? no no like but picture like sound on yeah. concrete like nails. Uh, <laughs> no, like, uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> get the chills. <laughs> I think my dad actually saw something similar, um, because he sw- he swears he saw. He says it's like a, a monster type thing, and it's starting to sound like a skinwalker. Because the, they're shapeshifters. The yeah. I need to ask him more. Say go into more detail. Yeah, get that story. I would like to know. Thank you, everyone. This has been another episode of the Posted Podcast with Mo Martinez, Brose, Lo, and the Postman. In the background, we got Brother Jose, aka Stunner Daniel. Follow us on Instagram. Like, comment, subscribe, and peace out.